high-powered phone systems. But you don't understand. What I'm going to need is some information on the H-89 before the meeting. Any luck yet on my schematics for the doctor's group? No, the machine's still down. Morning, Dorothy. Any messages? Here, Howard. That was a message from an important customer. But you know, every interaction on the phone is important. Of course, some may seem more complicated than others. But the basic goal of any business telephone conversation is just one thing, to communicate clearly. Excuse me. Good morning, Triad Phone Systems. Did you want sales or service? You want Scott Simpson. One moment, please. I'll connect you. Despite how complex this may seem, it's still just a telephone, and those of us in business rely on it every day, which is why it's so surprising how many people don't use the phone properly. Take, for example, administrative assistant Scott Simpson. Simpson here. Scott and Bill Peterson, doctor's group. Where's Helen? Uh, at lunch, Mr. Peterson. Listen, tell her we like the 50 remotes, and we're thinking about the Vista 2000 for the ER annex. We'll need about five extensions console and switching capabilities for an additional 10 units. Uh, yeah, sure. And I need to know if the intercom is adaptable with the other mobile. There are only so many useful hours in the workday. By not using the telephone effectively, we're wasting our own time uh, and right. that of others. And tell her that I've got to have the schematics at the design office no later than 4 o'clock on Friday the 24th. Uh, 24th. That's on 3rd Street. She's got the address. We'll need the main floor plan, the uh, entire electrical system, and your proposed schematics. Look, gotta run. Have you got that? Uh, yeah. Great. We all face lots of problems during the business day, and we all get frustrated. But as Carl Manning, production coordinator, is about to find out, a poor attitude can only make these problems worse. Yeah, this is Carl Manning. Oh, yes, I, I got your messages. Of course I was going to return your calls, but today is Friday and you guys... What? Another delay? But you guys promised me I'd have the new machine today. Hey, listen, you want to work with me on this? Good, good, get a copier in here. Two weeks? What good is that going to do me? I've got schematics to get out this week. Finally, there's Executive Secretary Helen Stanley, who is about to return some phone calls. Doctor's group. Yes, this is Helen Stanley, Mr. Burns' secretary at Triad Phone Systems. I'm returning Bill Peterson's call. Mr. Peterson is tied up right now. May I ask what this is a reference to? Um... Actually, I don't know. Could you hold on a minute, please? Putting someone on hold requires the same skill and courtesy as any other phone interaction. Dorothy, uh, look, Scott left me this message. I can't make heads or tails of it. Could you find him for me, please? Thanks. I'll wait. If we are insensitive to someone who is waiting, we may project an unprofessional image of ourselves and our organization. Gone home? Great. Just Okay, thanks. Hello? Hello? Think of it. Bill Peterson, waiting over an hour and a half for us on Friday for a meeting that we called in the first place. Now, why wasn't I told it was rescheduled? In addition, they've been waiting for Carl's schematics for over three weeks now. Because we... because we don't have a new copy machine? Well, what is going on here? And it isn't just the doctor's group account. Now, I don't... I don't understand. We've got a good team here. But we need to figure out what is going on and see what we can do to fix it. Now, think about it. That's all. So, ineffective use of the telephone can have important consequences. Loss of time. A poor attitude limits your effectiveness in dealing with other people, leading to a loss of productivity. And when you project an unprofessional image over the phone, 
That hits all of us where it hurts, with a loss of business. It isn't easy. Telephone skills require all the courtesy of dealing with people face to face. But when we have only our voices to represent us, we have to be especially aware of our actions. I know what you're saying, Dorothy. It's just that that telephone and I, we don't get along. All it does is bring me bad news. Then I get up tight and, well, you know, last week I wanted to take that thing and throw it out the window. It's just a telephone, Carl. You've got a good speaking voice. Why not let the phone work for you rather than against you? Yeah? Like how? Well, you know how you let the phone ring and ring and... But I can't answer it right away. Not all the time. I mean, work piles up. And then that ringing is just one more annoyance. Well, try to answer as soon as possible. That lets the caller know you're ready to do business. When you're uptight over the phone, it has a funny way of coming back at you. Hmm, you're telling me. I'd have gotten my new copy of last week if I hadn't blown my stack. You set me up? Good morning, Carl Manning speaking. May I help you? Just one moment, please. How was that? Perfect. Good. It's for you. Dorothy speaking. Dorothy. Hi. Uh, did you take this message from phone tech? Whose name is in the box, Scott? Oh, right. Sorry. I sure wish I handled phone calls like you do. I can give you a few pointers if you're interested. Oh, sure. Right. Okay, shoot. Well, first, you've got to listen carefully. Yes, ma'am. And second, question the caller. Ask for specifics. Well, what kind of specifics? Well, for instance, if the caller gives you a day, ask for a calendar date. Uh, don't think you know what the caller means. Ask to be sure. Right. And verify the information by reading it back. That way you prevent mistakes from being made in the first place. Okay. You said, listen carefully. Question the caller for specifics. And verify the information by reading it back. Scott, I think you've got the message. Triad phone systems. She's on another line. Would you care to hold? Thank you. Hi, Helen. Taking an early lunch? More like an early retirement. What's the problem? Oh, it's the doctor's group account. It's looking real iffy. I think I really blew it. Excuse me. Thank you for holding. She's still on the other line. Would you care to hold a little longer, or shall I have her return your call? Fine, thank you. Bye. Where are you going? Lunch is that way. Yes, but my telephone is that way. There's something I've left on hold a little too long. Bill Peterson. Bill? Helen. Listen, I still feel terrible about that mix-up last week. Is there any way we can make it up to you in the doctor's group? Well, frankly, we like your voice-activated system, but we can't seem to find the money for it in the budget. Well, Bill, we may be in luck. They've just released a less expensive model. Would you mind holding on a moment while I round up a quote? Not at all. Great, thanks. Nobody likes being put on hold, but sometimes it's the most efficient thing to do. This is Scott. May I help you? Scott, do you have that K960 brochure? I've got Bill Peterson on the line. I think Howard was using it for the Jordan account. I'll find it and I'll bring it right in. You, you can minimize the, the annoyance by checking back, reminding the caller that you haven't forgotten them. Sorry to keep you waiting, Bill. Still checking, or could I call you back? I'm reading my mail while I wait. No problem. I'll or on. offer to call them back. This tells them you're aware that their time is valuable, too. Finish your mail, Bill? Just about. What have you got? Well, really good news. It looks like the K960 system will save you about a third off the old estimate. That's great. That's really great. Tell you what, let me talk to my people and I'll get back to you, okay? Great. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. A good attitude can make all the difference, not just on incoming calls, but on outgoing calls as well. Be direct and to the point but also be courteous. 
Ron Cobb here. Bob speaking. Bob Carl. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Listen, um, I guess you heard I gave your shipping man a hard time. Yes, and I'm very sorry. Uh, but tell me, is there any chance of getting our new copy of this week? Can't promise it, Carl, but I've got a new order in for you right now. Hey, I really appreciate your help. And I know you guys are swamped, too. When the person on the other end of the phone perceives you as an ally, your ability to help them and yourself is enhanced. That's great. That's great. I'll owe you. Howard? I... Howard? Howard Burns' office. No, I'm afraid he isn't in. Oh, hello, Mr. Peterson. Can I take a message? Sure, hang on a second. Okay, Mr. Peterson, I'm ready. When you take messages, both the message giver and the message receiver are depending on you. An accurate, concise message should include name of the caller, the company name, doctor's group, reason for the call, doctor's group has chosen triad, the caller's telephone number, 555-3000, the time, and date, and day, and any special comments. Looking forward to working together. Hey, this is great news. Now let me verify this bill. Doctor's group has definitely chosen triad. That's terrific, that's great news. Thanks, bye. Helen, guess what? I heard. Congratulations, Scott. The telephone is really just an extension of ourselves, so when we take the time and effort to communicate clearly, the telephone can save time and increase productivity. Best of all, when we mean business on the phone, the phone means business for you, for me, for all of us.